Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Robbie Basil Show. You're going to be interested for this episode today. I'll start with this. Today is episode 50. And first of all, I like to open this saying thank you for multiple reasons to you guys, the viewers, because... So most of you who've subscribed to this channel or follow the Instagram started the journey with me from day one. And we started this show back in May of this year. So we've done 50 episodes through 26 weeks. I think it's 26 weeks. I don't even know where we're at anymore week-wise. Well, I started this at the end of my freshman spring semester and here at Iona. is what I did it in my other dorm room. And I've done well, 50 episodes since. So we've done a variety of topics. I broke down tournaments, previewed leagues, tried to make the most uh, helpful content for you guys so you can go out, maybe learn a thing or two from me, hear some perspective, uh, hear the ideas from another perspective or the an analysis from another perspective, I think is the better way to put it. So thank you guys for following. Uh, the journey, hopefully more to come because the view, not just the views, but like the motivation I get from you guys is insane to keep going. And listen, I, I love what I'm doing. I love what I get to do. And I'm grateful that and I'm going to go into the other part of why I'm grateful at the moment. But thank you guys for following the journey so far. And thank you for everyone who saw what I did on uh, from yesterday. Uh, for those who don't know, or did not see my Instagram story yesterday. You'll see a post about it hopefully soon. Probably, I would say early next week, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I still need to get some clips in from ESPN. Uh, I was the sideline reporter for the men's soccer game on th uh, well, yesterday, on Thursday, November 9th, when Iona played their playoff game. It was an insane experience. And for those who watched the game, you remember what happened. So the first interview I did with Coach Hamilton, shout out to him. He's a great personality. I love talking to him. The mic went out. What an incredible start. The first time I've ever done it, the mic went out, allegedly. I haven't actually gone back and watched it yet. I'm doing that league right after this. So that happened. And then I interviewed Coach Scott from Manhattan. And then at the end, I interviewed Tiago Kanya, who was man of the match. Great personality. I like Tiago a lot. Got to talk to a lot of you know different people at the game on Thursday, and you know a lot of people they like listen. This the game went back and forth. Uh, sucked to see that Mero got a red card. I mean, he kicked the dude in the thigh. I mean, he's on the ground, just put his boot up into a dude's thigh. So you will not see him in the MAC final, which is on Sunday. I'm not sure if I'm going to be sideline reporting again. Hopefully, I find out soon. But uh, I will be there behind a camera, working in the truck. I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, that'll be a fun, interesting situation to see Iona's first ever MAC final for soccer held here at Mozilla Field. So hopefully you guys want to come out in the freezing cold because it's going to be, it's going to feel like 40, I think, at kickoff. So but for, shout out to everyone who liked the suit as well. I thought that was the funniest part because I think, so for those who don't know, I had to wear that thing all day. Not as making an excuse at all, but I wore it for class. I wore it because, like, I'm a student still. I'm a sophomore here. And while I get to do – what I get to do right now is insane. I'm extremely grateful for Garrett and Mike and Aiden for giving me the opportunities that I'm getting, of course. But it's weird for me to, like, walk around in a suit all day. I I'm really living, like, how a real broadcaster would because – but – you know, it's a lot of fun. I, like I said, I'm grateful for what I'm able to do. And hopefully I get this thing on Sunday. But listen, you guys will see me hopefully behind a camera tomorrow and to that tonight because men's basketball is tonight. I got to preview them later in this video. So make sure it's actually going to be these, I think, the second to last topic of today's show because we have the Premier League and Champions League. Actually, it's going to be the third topic of today's show. My mistake, reading my sh uh, sheet wrong. So that'll be the third topic. So I would recommend you guys. Uh, probably fast forward about the half hour mark if you want to make, swap, listen to my takes on Iona basketball because I'm going to recap their game from Monday night as well as preview what they're going to be doing, hopefully what I'm expecting for them this season. And on that note, I feel like it's finally time to dive into this week's, so today's episode, episode number 50. And today's topics 
I already mentioned Iona basketball, but we have the Premier League to preview for this weekend. We have the Champions League to recap from Tuesday and Wednesday because it was chaotic. We have F1 also to talk about. Let me just look at my sheet because I might be missing something. And while I check my sheet, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. 10 likes on this video, and I will do a commentary of your guys' choosing. Hopefully, I really want to do it. I just want to make sure. Um, I, I, I just need you guys to hit the like button, and you can, I can look like the fool in the next episode. Also, next week, that's what I was reading. Uh, we have the NFL preview, the preview for this week. I talked about the Jets game. I'm not going to do it again here because I talked about it yesterday on Into the Stands. Uh, make sure to check out that episode. That's going to be linked in the description of this of this video. Shout out to Dom. He joined us yesterday. He was a great guest. A lot of fun. So today's uh, we were opening with the Prem in the Champions League. I own a basketball, NFL, and then we'll talk about Vegas for this weekend, which I- I'm just pissed off about it already. But on next week, on Monday... We're going to do MLB free agency. If you want to be a guest for that video, uh, hit me up on Instagram in the DMs. I will be checking the DMs all weekend, but because that's just what I do, I guess. I don't know. But let's just dive into what we're supposed to be doing today. So we got the Premier League this weekend. We have a ton of matches to go over. And let's just look at them real quick. So Saturday, we open with Tottenham and Wolves, which that's going to put me to sleep because Tottenham, just if we found out, is it has multiple injuries, including James Madison and Richarlison. And if I can find my phone, there's one more. I'll, I'll pull up what uh, Ange said, Ange Postacoglu, because Chelsea, let's just bring this up real quick. Chelsea on Monday played Tottenham. I forgot to bring this up. And probably one of the weirdest matches all of, all of the season, because Chelsea struggled for a little bit against nine-man Tottenham. Let's take that in for a quick second because Tottenham got two red cards to Odogi and uh, Christian Romero, which hate to see it. Kulusevski scored early, then Cole Palmer scored, and Nicholas Jackson got the dumbest hat trick I've ever seen. And he did like some celebrations at the end, which is why you, you be- guys barely beat nine. I I will say this: they barely beat nine man Tottenham. I really think that Chelsea only going up to tenth place in the league, but for Tottenham. They're going up against the Wolves team because if you take a look at the wool at the Wolves, I believe they're coming off losing to Sheffield. Yeah, they lost to Sheffield United last week. So what am I expecting out of this game at the Molyneux? I'm expecting a draw. I really am. That's my expectation. What I think is going to happen, I think Tottenham's going to win. But with losing James Madison, how big impactful he's been this season, and if you look at the projected lineups for uh, the t- for uh, Tottenham. You have a player in Brennan Johnson, who I haven't heard of all season. Hoiber, Basuma, Saar. Uh, the, the defense is not looking like that insane. But Vicario has been great. I love Vicario. So, I mean, but look at the injuries. They, they, lot, I mean, they lose. Oh, there's Mickey Vandevin. That was the other injury. Oh, my mistake. It was Mickey Vandevin. He's out till January. You have Richarlison out till the, likely till a boxing day. And then you have the suspensions for Romero and Adogi. And, of course, the injury probably till the middle of January for James Madison. So, interesting situation for Tottenham. I'm expecting a draw, but I think it could be a 1-0. Because, remember, remember uh, Wolves are playing out so, so a couple of decent players as well. And Wolves have really struggled this season, but hopefully Jose saw a net can keep uh, some goals out of the back of the net and earn Wolves a point. Other matches, we have Arsenal, who should get three points with Burnley. I'll just quickly talk about this. If you look at the projected lineup, Arsenal still don't know what they're doing. There's, I mean, they uh, Bukayo Saka may have picked up a knock. We know Odegaard's out again, uh, most likely. He's doubtful for this team. Uh, Partey got hurt again. Uh, a lot of bad injuries, especially with the forwards. So Saka and Ketia are both going to be out of this game. So the formation likely is going to be with Reese Nelson, my dog Reese Nelson, uh, with Leandro Trostard and Martinelli, Rice, Havertz, and Pat Vieira, Sinchenko, Gabriel Saliba, and Ben White with Brian Nett. I think this should be Ramsdale, but what the heck do I know at this point? Company is going to probably rock out the 4-2-3-1 with the gang impress. So hopefully Arsenal does not get destroyed by that. I'm expecting a 2-0 win from Arsenal. And then the game of the day, Newcastle born at the 1230 is not going to be very good. I think Newcastle should win it. Man United, I we'll talk about United more in a minute because they had a very embarrassing moment in the middle of the week. 
and a situation that I've actually been asked to talk about. So I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, Aston Villa plays Fulham on Sunday. The game of the week is Chelsea City. Of course it is. And the impact of this game on Sunday is great. If you look at the injuries, I mean, just how many injuries Chelsea has is insane. Will we see Christopher and Kunku? Probably not in this game. I mean, I hope I, I wanted him to return so bad, but head to head, I mean, Man City's won the last couple of times here. If they won the FA Cup in January, they won in the league uh, in May of this year. So now heading into a matchup uh, on Sunday, and then they won't play again until around Valentine's Day, in 2024. So. In the history, I mean, the last, previous 38 matches, City's won 58% of them. Listen, I think it's going to be difficult for City. I'm playing at Stamford Bridge in the environment that it's going to be, I'm expecting City to win. But I think Chelsea's going to make it very, very hard because they're going to have a lot of energy, I think, from that match on Monday when they beat Spurs. A crucial win against Spurs because that gives City the top spot in the league. However, Chelsea, like I said, they've played some of the top teams well this season. In terms of getting points, you got because I believe they got a point against Liverpool on match day one. They did. So if you look at how they've played the top three teams, Chelsea have won one of their matches, drawn two. They're unbeaten against three of the top four teams, and they haven't played the fourth one yet. So Chelsea, I guess, are good against the top four other than City because they haven't played them yet. But it's an interesting situation for uh, Chelsea. I'm excited to see how that one will look. And then the other matches for that day, we have Villa Fulham, Brighton Sheffield. I feel like can be a weird one. Liverpool Brentford. That's probably gonna be the match of the nine o'clock session. And I think it would be a possible trap game for West Ham. They're playing Nottingham Forest, a West Ham team that I feel like has struggled recently. Because if you look at their last match, a couple of matches, I mean they beat Olympiacos, but it's been really back and forth. Because they've had a run where, if you go back to the beginning of October, it feels like October eighth, you got. I mean, after their win against Sheffield at the end of September, and then their win in the Europa League, they've drawn Newcastle, lost to Villa, lost to Olympiacos in the Europa League. Then they lost to Everton. They beat Arsenal in the EFL Cup. They haven't won a league match since September 30th. So, listen, it's an interesting situation, but can this be the bounce back for West Ham against a Nottingham Forest team that's in good form right now as well? So, that's a, that'll be something to watch out for, definitely for me for this week, because I'm really expecting that that game with West Ham and Nottingham Forest can go down to the wire. Definitely. And then next week, actually, no, that'll be two weeks because we have an international break. We'll also hopefully talk about that on Monday. I'm not sure yet how we're going to do this now because MLB free agency and all that coming up. Maybe that's the end of the stand stop. We'll see. Make sure to follow um, the socials to make sure because now I'm not even sure what I'm going to do because I completely forgot the international breaks next week. And now the Champions League. So, for those who don't know, uh, who haven't followed this show for a while, I did the Champions League prediction video all the way back in September. And we did the Champions League predictions group by group, game by game. And at the end of the season, we're gonna I'm tallying them all up and see how I did. Percentage-wise, like in terms of correct picks, currently I'm at 57.8% correct, 37, 37 of 64 not a great week this week, though. We went 9 for 16, with the, which is 56.25%, which, uh, I mean, we out of the three of the four weeks, we've been over 50%, which is not terrible because the Champions League's been really crazy this year. And this week was, especially was crazy. Let's break it down. We'll start from Tuesday. Yes, we are. And we're going to open with by far the weirdest matchup of the day, Shakhtar, a team that I expected to win this game. In the prediction video, beat Barcelona one to nothing. I did not stutter and I did not say that wrong. Barcelona, a team that out XG Shakhtar by only .07, outshot them but had the only one big chance, according to Footmob, lost in at in Hamburg. I think it's where this game was. This is in Hamburg, right? Right now I bottled this. Damn it. Yeah, and the Volk Volkspark Stadion close enough, in Hamburg, Germany, because right now, probably can't play in Ukraine. The boys from Ukraine have gone out and beaten Barcelona one to nothing. 
You know, they've really opened the door for Porto a little bit here. Because, well, typical Porto, they went out and won a big match. They beat Antwerp 2 to nothing. Good for them. I mean, that, that group just got flipped on its head because Barcelona, after their very hot start, winning three, going three for three, lost. And now are tied with Porto heading into the next match day. Because for the next match day, this group is going to get decided in the next match day. Because if Shakhtar beats Antwerp somehow, then... Now, you will set up a matchup in Barcelona where Barca plays Porto. If Porto wins this, Porto will probably clinch a spot in the knockouts and have to face off at the end of this season with Shakhtar. If Shakhtar wins, this is a problem. If Shakhtar wins next week, this group is going to be going down to the wire. Because what you're really hoping for as a fan, and for this is to be funny as hell, if Barca draws their match with Porto and then Shakhtar wins, because then Shakhtar can go out and win to possibly beat Porto, and Barcelona can lose, and then Barcelona just doesn't make it to knockouts, that would be funny, but I don't think that would happen. So a lot to look out for, because that group, if you take a look at it, Group H has been flipped on its head due to a crucial win from Shakhtar Donetsk. We also had... A couple of teams clinch their way into the round of 16. We had Group G, which very predictably, we had Man City go 4-4, four for four, and Leipzig are on 9 points. They're also through with being 8 points clear with 2 games remaining. Shout out to both of those teams with City going out on Tuesday and beating Young Boys 3 to nothing. We also had Leipzig beat Red Star, a game that I thought Red Star would win by a score of 2-1, to one, which is flipped from my actual prediction. Also clinching a spot in the knockouts, we ha- are going to go up quickly. We're going to go group by group. Uh, group F is going down as what people expect it to be. Absolutely insanity. We have Dortmund in first somehow, with Dortmund going out on on Tuesday and beating Newcastle two to nothing, putting Newcastle back down to earth. We also had AC Milan finally score a goal, and not just one; they scored two of them. They beat. PSG, after going down one nothing, courtesy of goals from Rafa Leao and Olivier Giroud, Arsenal legend Olivier, Olivier Giroud, to win this one 2-1, to one, giving some life to AC Milan. AC Milan now, at this point in the competition, are in third on five points, drawing two, finally winning a match, and of course having one loss. The next match for AC Milan, it's going to be a fun one, they host Dortmund. The yellow wall goes to San Siro. That will be a fun matchup for, for a couple of, in a couple of weeks. Also this week we had P uh, we had PSG of course PSG losing to AC Milan. So the group is now Dortmund on seven points, PSG on six, AC Milan on five, and Newcastle on four. That group is insane, and that's exactly what you're expecting. We had in Group E, Atletico Madrid got saved by Celtic because Celtic got a red card, and Atletico Madrid put up six. On Celtic. That match ended Atletico, Atletico Madrid 6, Celtic 0. I mean, we had a, a goal from Antoine Griezmann, then a red card, and then five more goals. Yeah, I mean, that probably saves Atletico Madrid's whole tournament right there. Yeah. But we also had another weird result. We had Feyenoord. Out of absolutely nowhere, lose one to nothing to Lazio. Lazio igniting their tournament chances as Lazio, as of right now, is in second. A team that I projected to finish in last in this group. And this is not the first time this happened because we talk about the next group that happened again. Lazio now in second with two games remaining. And Lazio's games remaining, let's take a look at them real quick. They open with, I got to find the right match. <laughs> professional here guys Lazio opens with why can't I find it <laughs> Lazio opens with Celtic so now essentially Atletico Madrid is playing for their tournament lives because Feyenoord at home is a tall order Feyenoord I mean they're one of the best teams currently in in their in the Dutch league a Dutch league that's been turned on its head with PSV, of course, PSV, A, Z, Alkema, and Feyenoord, of course, Feyenoord, excuse me. 
uh, of course, being the top three. But if you look down the league, you have struggles from Vitesse, for example, Ajax in 12th. Like, that's just not what you were expecting. Just a quick note on the Dutch League, because I love the Dutch League. It's a fun league to manage in FIFA, and I'll tell you that. But, you know, that group's going to go down to the wire. But Group D, I look really bad. We have Real Sociedad, just advanced to the knockouts. A team that I projected to finish in last made the knockouts. Again. Because, of course, we could have possibly a possibility of Lazio, of course. But Real Sociedad did a job. They went on beat. They've won three of four. And they've gone on beat. And they drew uh, against Inter recently. And then went out and beat Benfica twice. And beat Salzburg. A, a team that we... I mean, they just beat Benfica three to one. To advance to the knockouts. Benfica. One of the two giants that are highly disappointing in this tournament. It, it could have been three with AC Milan if they lost, but look at this. Benfica on zero points, one goal scored, negative six goal difference, and has a chance to not even make the Europa League. Benfica is playing for the, now their Europa League lives. They play next against Inter and then Salzburg. You need a point against Inter now. But at this point, any points would be useful for them. Group C is going semi how I expected it, other than the bottom two. We had Real Madrid do Real Madrid things. They went out and beat Braga 3 to nothing. By the way, I also forgot to mention this. South to Inter just ruining my whole thing. I think Sa- I picked Salzburg to win one nothing, and they won one nothing. But we had... Real Madrid win 3 to nothing, and Union Berlin finally decide to play football. Getting their first point in a good amount of time, they went out and drew Napoli one all in Naples, giving them a chance. They are now on one point, but not out of the race yet. Winning out and hoping Napoli chokes it would keep them in the Champions League, but I projected them to be in a Europa League spot, and I still think they can get there. How so? This is going to reunite a ton, ignite a ton of energy. Because if they can go out, and this is my hope. I want them to beat Leverkusen. They play Leverkusen on Sunday. They can carry that momentum as they go to Portugal in a winner-take-all match for the Europa League spot now, most likely, with Braga on the 25th. 29th, excuse me. So, right after Thanksgiving, you get more. You get the football that we've been asking for. So, that will be a very fun match. Real Madrid seals their spot in the knockouts. Napoli can go out and clinch a spot in the knockouts. I, I believe getting a point against Real Madrid and Braga losing. I think that's how it works. I don't know. Group B is not how I expected it at all. Sevilla uh, have disappointed also everybody. They lost to Arsenal 2 to nothing with, the of course, the injury to Bukayo Saka. Leandro Trossard scored early on. Saka got the second. Arsenal won 2 to nothing. Sevilla got outclassed off the field. And then PSV igniting their chances to make the knockouts. They won one to nothing against Lens, a Lens team that didn't look very good. They didn't look good at all. And, well, now they're going to be fighting for the Europa League lives because Arsenal, I believe, play. Yeah, Arsenal plays Lens next. If Arsenal wins and Sevilla wins, Sevilla is going to go back to the Europa League because the last match is Arsenal PSV. It is still possible to me that Sevilla can make. The knockouts of the Champions League. It's not over over for them yet, especially with the schedule that Arsenal has. My question is, how's Arsenal going to to play with their recent injuries to Partey, Saka, Martin Odegaard, Eddie and Ketia? That's where I. This is where I'm worried about now. If you're an Arsenal fan, this is where you should be worried because Champions League knockout spots not sealed yet, but it's still a long way to go. Two matches, anything can happen. So. The Arsenal gets Lens next, and of course we have the matchup with Sevilla and PSV in España. And now to your main event. The weirdest result of Wednesday. Copenhagen, Copenhagen 4, Man United 3. <laughs> this match, this deserves a full recap. So what happened? This is actually, Let me just talk about this first. The Rashford red card. I feel like as a referee, I think I, me knowing the rules very well, I would like to think. Let's break it down. I agree with the red card. I don't think that's a very popular opinion. 
And the reason I agree with it is, well, one, I, like I said, I've said it multiple times, VAR needs to be consi- more consistent. Rashford, you cannot, you can make an argument he didn't know where the defender was. Look where he struck him. If Rashford was playing the ball, he would be lower than where the ball was. Meaning his foot would not eclipse the top of the ball. To me, it looked like his foot when he, I feel like he knew where the defender was because he went studs up into his ankle or his like upper ankle area to where the top of the, near the top of the ball. So I agree with the red card. I think it was the right call. I mean, not much else about it, but we've seen for Manchester United, the hope you have is that Rasmus Hoyland in the Champions League. Cause I don't think he can do anything in the Prem. He's showing why I liked him as my possible signing of the season in the uh, season prediction video with, with, um, with Dylan back in, in late August when that video got posted. I told, talked to you about Rasmus Hoyland being a possible stud, and he's been a stud in the wrong competition. I mean, he has five goals. He's tied for the golden boot with Alvaro Morata. I mean, like, this just should, just should not be happening. I mean... Let's just go through what happens. So United go up two, then they get the red card. Then, ooh, this is where this is getting a frustration for me. Ulyonusi, Ulyonusi, close enough, scored a goal, and then Goncalves scored a penalty, leveling it, and then Fernandez scored, and then Laraga scored, and then Bargi, Bargi, I don't know anymore, scored in the 87th minute to win it for Copenhagen. It's... It's Danish. I don't know. I think it's Danish, right? Let me just make sure. <laughs> I don't want to be like wrong on something like this because it was, I think, the substitute bar. I don't know how. It, oh, it's Swede. There you go. I, I knew it was something like that. A 17 year old Swede scored the winner off the bench, and Copenhagen now has ignited their chances to make the knockouts. They're in second. Copenhagen, second, Copenhagen. I don't think you were expecting me to say that at this point. We also have Galatasaray, who barely lost to Manchester United, uh, Manchester United, Bayern, Bayern, who clinched their spot in the knockouts as well, unsurprisingly. Now we're in a situation where United go to Turkey next, a match where I am backing Galatasaray. If Galatasaray wins and Bayern wins, Manchester United are eliminated. Just putting it out there. So Manchester United, their reputation for this season, Ten Hag's job, their entire squad, their entire reputation relies on that match in Turkey. It's just the way it is. So you fail to get out of a Champions League group with, of course, Bayern. You weren't going to be Bayern, but you lost to Copenhagen. You're going to lose to Galatasaray twice. Um, that's a legit contender. That's the team we thought we were going to finish in the top four this year. The problem. This is like a Chelsea esque season for them now. If you really think about it, I don't know. Twenty fifth and twenty sixth when the next match starts. I think. Uh, 28th and 29th, excuse me. So it'll be Tuesday 28th, Wednesday 29th, the day after thanks, the, like the weekend after Thanksgiving. Uh, you'll see the full preview of that weekend. Enough about soccer. Let's go to basketball. Iona basketball. The let's just go over this. So Iona had one returner from last year, one Uno singular returner, and he was out for the game. Uh, on Monday. So Iona went out and lost to College of Charleston, a team that won 31 games last year, 71 to 69. I did get to watch them most, if not all, of this game. I was flipping through that in the Jets. Iona, both teams struggled to score in the second half, but Iona did score more in the second half. It was just certain areas of the first half, Charleston looked like the much better team, or outclassing Iona getting more rebounds. The issue with Iona, I think, is their size. They don't have a player over 6'8", besides Osborne Shima who was the player that was out for the game on Monday. So 
hopefully he plays in the home opener, which is tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. I will be a part of that crew. Not as a commentator, but behind the camera. I think at least. I don't even know what I'm doing yet. I'm part of the team, which is great. Uh, Iona, let's talk about their non-conference first. So the non-conference, before I talk about the roster, I think this non-conference is pretty good. So you have Sacred Heart, which is tonight. They went on a frustrating loss to Carlos or Charleston. They go to a tournament featuring teams like High Point. I think Long Beach State's in it. Hofstra. Speaking of Hofstra, Iona does play Hofstra. And it's going to be right here. So the battle of the schools I could have gotten, could have gone to uh, with Iona and Hofstra. I type top two schools going number, well, going head to head. The Basil Bowl. I'm calling it that now. I'm dubbing it that. Uh, Iona does play Colorado, which I think is going to be a challenge in the non conference. We also have the, the smart schools. Coming to town with Colgate. So the Toothpaste Boys are coming to town uh, before, right before Christmas. And then Harvard. So it'll be a, it plays Iona. So it'll be uh, a reunion for Iden Tretout, who I think went to Harvard. We do have a lot of smart players on this team. I don't know. I mean, listen, I'll take it, you know. So let's go over the roster next. Because, you know, of course, you have the usual max schedule. You get Manhattan twice. You get Niagara. Next, before I go over the roster, let's go over the preseason uh, standings. So the preseason coaches poll, which in other sports has been very accurate, but I think for basketball, it's the hardest one. You have Ryder, who is one of the best teams, one of the biggest surprises from last season in number one. Then we have Iona, unsurprisingly in second. I think it's right to put Iona at least in the top three. They still have a very good roster. They got a new head coach, Tobin Anderson, who looks, by the way, much better as a person than Rick Pitino was. So. He's only coached one game, and the whole environment here loves him already. That's how you win over your fans, ladies and gentlemen. Then, surprisingly, Canisius in third, a team that was very disappointing last year, finished bottom, uh, actually 10th in the MAC regular season. I think that's where they finished. Uh, then we have Siena, which is respectable. I expected them to be around there. Then we have Quinnipiac, who did lose some players as well. Fairfield, Mount St. Mary's in seventh, which is an interesting spot for them. Uh, Marist, who was in the final against Iona last year in the MAC tournament. And then Niagara, a team that had a, a lot of good players, lost a lot of talent, and because of that, aren't projected to finish in ninth. I think that's going to be the bottom team that surprises everyone. It's going to be Niagara or Manhattan. Because St. Peter's in 10th. Manhattan 11th, I think, is unjustified. I think it should be St. Peter's bottom. I would put Marist below Manhattan. I would put Mount St. Mary's, I think, almost below Manhattan as well. I think Manhattan is a pretty decent squad. But let's go. Uh, the preseason player of the year is Mervyn James. I get I get that because he's been here a while, but in the MAC for a little while. Preseason All MAC first team we have Iona Stud Osborne Shima, who we'll talk about in a second. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, there's a Mount St. Mary's player. I think he's going to carry them. Quinnipiac's Matt Blanc, who killed Iona last year, and of course Mervyn James and Alan Powell uh, for Ryder, two registered seniors. Uh, of course, you have a couple of Canisius players, Taj Stavesky. Caleb Fields from Fairfield, he's very solid. Paul Tino, I think he's a transfer. He's a senior, though, for Quinnipiac. Uh, for Iona, two other players to watch out for are Aiden Treatsout and Joel Brown. I mean, I think that's going to be... I think both of them, both of them actually, I think, had pretty good games against... Um, just double-checking this for, against the College of Charleston. I know Treatsout was very involved. in Aiden Treatsout, 17 points in the opener. Joel Brown had only four. He did have a rough day, though. So let's now talk about uh, the squad. Since we talked about the schedule, we talked about where we were, the Iona is projected to finish. Now let's talk about the squad themselves. They're not very tall. This is totally different from last year. And you're going to notice a couple of different things from last year. One, this team is not as good of a shooting team. Not by very much. They love to take it to the basket. And I kind of like it. It's... How I I don't even know how you would put it because it's like kind of old school, but you know, something that Tobin I think did last year a lot and it really caused some problems. But listen, this team has its grad students. I think one junior and Greg Gordon, like a, I think maybe one sophomore and then the rest are freshmen. It's a very weirdly built squad. But at, to their to their credit, they look pretty good in their opener, but. 
it's what you probably were expecting when you only had one returning player. So, of course, which was Oz Morishima, the player, the grad student from Kanobe, Rwanda. He transferred from originally transferred originally transferred to here from the New Mexico Military Institute. Uh, players that I liked from the first game, there's a I think Sultan Adewale, the freshman. I think he's underrated. I think he's going to be pretty very good uh, in an Iona jersey. We have Aiden Shritow, who had a great first game. Who else do I like? Jeremiah Quigley. I think he's a pretty good three point scorer. Greg Gordon. I think he's a phenomenal personality. He actually did um, I think some interviews on uh, the basketball Instagram, which was kind of funny. We had a Weza Ponzo from Ontario. He looked all right. Isaac Bryce, who won the dunk contest at um the Maroon Mate. What? What the hell was the event called? Maroon Maniacs? Was that what? Was that what? I don't even know what the heck the event was called. Was that what, what it was called? Let me know in the comments. He's pretty solid. They're a very small team. They have some very good players. Uh, Alex Bates also was impactful uh, in the first game. So I think, and of course you have head coach Tobin Anderson. How can I forget about Tobin Anderson? Guy I've met. Uh, you can see that post. That's actually on on Instagram already. He actually gave me a shirt, which I should wear to tonight's game, but I'm not going to because it's a polo shirt. But, you know, Iona, where am I projecting them to finish? I'm expecting them to... The expectation is to finish first. And I think they're going to finish top two. Do I have the finishing in first? Yes, I do. This is an unbiased perspective, even though I'm wearing an Iona shirt. It's going to take a little bit of time. You're going to. I think you're going to see them struggle in that tournament down south in a, next week. I, I do think that's a very big possibility to a lot of new players. They're really gelling together, though, pretty solid. And I think uh, Tobin also Ross, using a lot of players, showing a high press. They got a 10-second count, which is what uh, you love to see. You saw that a lot last year, seeing the same trend again. So, I mean, the press did get, did get, bro- did get broken a couple of times, but Listen, this Iona team, they're fast. They can shoot. They can drive to the basket. They can hit a shot with a couple of guys if they need to. They got some underrated players, a player like a Sultan Adewale or Sully Adewale, uh, who I'm very intrigued about, by the way. I get to watch him for the first time tonight. I've heard a lot about him. Very intrigued. But the Iona team, a lot of expectations. You'll hear me talk about them on this show here and there. Maybe I even interview one of them one time. Who knows? Let me know if you want to see that in the comments. So Iona basketball has is about to tip off, but but NFL season has been absolute madness. So let's preview your big games for this week. Starting with the mid bowl, the toilet bowl, whatever the hell you want to call last night game between the Panthers and the and the Bears. I'm not talking about that game. That game was terrible. So what do I want to watch for this week? I mean. I think the Texans are going to give Cincinnati some problems. I like that game a lot for the Texans. T. Higgins is reportedly out, so I think the Texans' defense is going to look better. I'm, I'm expecting the Bengals to win, but I think the Texans are going to put up a pretty good fight, especially against the weaker Cincinnati secondary. You have the Colts and the Patriots in a game that I do not know how is still... Um, I mean, it's it's a London... Or it's a, is that game in Germany? This is one of the things where you just don't know. Where is this game? Oh, it's in... It's in Deutschland, so it's in Germany. Um, it's going to be mid another mid-off. I'm expecting the Patriots to win, but it's going to be like 9-6. That's my expectation. Uh, game of the day uh, in the early slot, Bear, not the Bears, the Browns. The Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens is going to be the best 1 o'clock game. I think so. It's either going to be that. I mean, 49ers-Jags you can put in, in that category, but I think with just the way the narrative the AFC North having the, is strongly, arguably the best division so far this season. Uh, Deshaun Watson playing. I mean, the Browns are a playoff team right now. They're playing go up against Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's look very solid, I think, this season. This is a question to both of them: Can they go out and be a good, solid divisional opponent once again? Uh, I'm expecting the Ravens at home to get the job done, but don't be surprised if the Browns go out and sneak away a win. The Jags host the 49ers. I'm expecting the Jags to get a, to get a massive win this weekend. Statement by Jacksonville to cause more frustration for the 49ers. The 49ers making, having a good, solid trade deadline, acquiring Chase Young. But I still think Brock Purdy is in a spiral. And I think this is 
after this game, because listen, the Niners are going to be in a questionable spot, but they get the Bucks next. So I think this is going to be the end of this, like the stuck in the mud moment for the 49ers. You go out and lose this game. It's granted, it's coming off a buy. So I think maybe this could be the get out of the mud moment for Brock Purdy. But I think it's, if it's not this week, it's going to be totally be next week. They're playing the Bucks, a team that doesn't defend very well. They just got torched by CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans. So this week, I'm going to pick the Jags. And next week, I'm going to probably pick the Niners. But listen, it's, it's an interesting situation in a game that can go either way. So I'm very excited for that one as well. Also, on Sunday, we have the Saints and the Vikings, and the Titans and the Bucks, and of course, Packers, Steelers. In the 4 o'clock session, you cannot, if this is not your game of the week, then I don't know what to say. It's the, Car- I'm just kidding, it's not the Cardinals and the Falcons and the Battle of the Birds. It's the D- Detroit Lions and the Los Angeles Chargers. So the Chargers at home come off a massive win against the New York Jets last week, taking on the a Lions team that is top of the NFC North and deservingly top of the NFC North. The Chargers, who I believe have won, they've won back to back, trying to make it three in a row. I mean, after a two game losing streak to the Cowboys and the Chiefs, they go out and beat the Bears and they beat the Jets. So, listen, they go up against two more NFC opponent, NFC North opponents this week in the Lions and the next week in the Green Bay Packers. So, I like this matchup for the Chargers. I really do. But at the end of the day, I think I'm going to take the Detroit Lions slightly. I'm just, it's going to be a three to seven point game I, to either team. I like the Detroit Lions defense a little bit more than the Chargers. But I think the Chargers are going to be able to bring a lot of pressure. Khalil Mack had a big game this last time against the Jets. Same with Joey Bosa. So I think they're both going to be very big threats. And of course, you can't go this defense without naming Derwin James. I think he's going to have a great game this week. The Giants are going to play the Cowboys. We talked about this yesterday into the stands to so make sure to go listen to what Colin uh, he had a very good perspective on this game from yesterday, so go listen to him and talk about that. We have the Falcons and the Cardinals. This is a must-win for the Falcons because if the Falcons find a way to lose, the Falcons are going to be in some trouble because they are currently one game back of the New Orleans Saints, a Saints team that goes up against the Minnesota Vikings and Joshua Dobbs this week, which I'm thinking Dobbs goes out and wins again, which ignites the Vikings' entire season because the Vikings have won four in a row. And they're in a very good spot. So give me the Falcons. And then they're going to be tied at the end of this week with the Saints. And if, it, if it's the opposite, I'm sorry. But I, th- I think this should be a win for the Falcons. We have the Seahawks and the Commanders. I think Geno Smith is going to have a nice game this week. And then Sunday Night Football, the New York Jets against the Vegas Raiders. I want to pick the Vegas Raiders, not going to lie. But the... Let's let's look at the Jets' road record this year because the Raiders' defense looked really good last week. I mean, on the road this year, do we? Do they even have? They have one road win, technically two, but they haven't been on the road a lot. They get to go on the road a little bit towards the back end of the season. So the Jets' road wins this season. Uh, I like to take a quick second for what everyone thinks it is. And I'll let you know what it is in a moment. So take two seconds and say out loud what do you think it is. Or just like te- figure it out. There's your chance. It's two. And one of them was a neutral cider. So listen, it's an interesting moment for the Jets. They went out. Uh, they've lost on the road. Actually, no. No, because they beat the Bills at home. They lost the Cowboys on the road. They Their only road win this season is against the Denver Broncos. So I'm actually going to pick the the New York Jets to win this game but it's not going to be pretty. Give me a three-point win for the New York Jets, and on Monday, we'll break down Monday Night Football. So all to play for this week in the NFL. For our finale of today's episode, we have, of course, Vegas, baby. We are going to Las Vegas for the Formula One. What the heck did they call this? Heineken Silver Vegas Grand Prix. I cannot wait for this. And if you want to be able to watch this incredible content, um, I have some news for you. The race is at one in the morning. Um, right. So I am not going to be able to watch this. And that is very unfortunate because I really wanted to watch this race. There, <sighs> F1 really screwed up. They really did. Because 
I mean, you have qualifying. I think it's at 3 in the morning Eastern time. Yeah, it's at 3 a.m. Eastern, midnight Pacific. Why? Why? 10 p.m. race start time? Dude, like, if you were... If you're taking your kid to this event, bro, they're going to be asleep by the time this race starts. I don't know. Tonight is FP1, because this is weird for me not saying FP1 hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm getting... What, what do I expect? I, I just don't know what to expect. There's some long straights, which it gives advantage to a car like a Max Verstappen. If you have a car... That's very good in the straights and not as good in the corners. It's if you have a car that's good in Miami, let's go back to Miami real quick. Pull up, but bring me back up the schedule. I'm gonna have similar predictions to Miami. I, I think that's the right way to look at this. So we had Verstappen, and then uh, Perez. Uh, if you look, at, I'm gonna look at the qualifying because this is what I'm gonna really focus on. A car, listen, what, who do I think can make a move this week? I think it could be Carlos Sainz. He had a good qualifying in Miami. Uh, Fernando Alonso, uh, the Spaniard, also had a very good result. But Sergio Perez was good in Miami, and I think this track would be similar-ish to Miami. Uh, Gasly, Russell, Charles Leclerc. Verstappen qualified P9, DNF, and I think can qualify that day. I don't really remember that well because it was in May when we started this show. But... Listen, I, I think it's going to go, it could go a million different ways. I think that's what we like. Because when you're looking at these new races, you can expect a guy like a Max Verstappen to win. Very fair, by the way. But at the same time, you just don't know who else can make a move. And that's what I'm very intrigued about. Can the Ferraris, can Charles Leclerc really redeem himself after what he did last week, thrashing into the barriers and didn't wasn't even able to start the race in Sao Paulo? I think he can have a big race day, but I think you guys are going to have to possibly uh, be able to rewind this race because I, sorry right now, I am not watching the race on, when is this race again? Is it on Sunday night? It it might be like on Monday morning at like 3 a.m. or something. So I have class in the morning. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to watch this race. I'll be able to watch like replays and highlights and all that stuff. So. You will get some analysis from this race from me on Monday, but man, it's going to be an interesting night. Actually, the race is on Saturday night, so I'm confused. Today is Friday. I don't know. I'm probably reading this wrong. Oh, because it's next. Pe- I had an oopsie, guys. The race is next week. I thought today was November 16th. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll talk about it next week. MLB Free Agency video coming soon. That will be all for today's episode of Into the Stands. Uh, Into the Stands. This is when you know you're like on, it's been a stre- it's going to be a stressful week. <laughs> That will be all for this episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. 10 likes on this video, and I will do a commentary at the start of an episode in this suit that you saw me in the Instagram post on a topic of your guys' choosing. If you want to see me do that right here on this show, make sure to hit the like button on this video, and I will do it for the next video. On that note, I'm Robbie Basil saying so long. I'll see you guys next time. Sorry about the blunders during now multiple parts of this video. And like I said, I'll see you guys on Monday. Goodbye, everyone.